All right, everybody, let's see if we get this thing going now. Give it just a couple of seconds here to start the stream. Make sure that everything's rocking and rolling. You can hear me. Uh, get me going on some comments here so we can get going with some announcements. 7 o'clock here in California. I know it's late back east, 10 o'clock-ish. Uh, appreciate those guys back there that are hanging in there. I know Gabe said he's going to hang out with me. Uh, N1 UFO. I know uh, Tony K9 ARV is out there. We got a couple of guys. There's Gabe, first one in there again. At least it's telling me it's working this time. So uh, how's the audio, Gabe? Give me an audio check real quick. Dude, it's 90 degrees in my garage, so I have to have the fan blowing on me a little bit, but I'm hoping these earbuds are, are knocking it down. So uh, audio sound better. Tim, how you doing? Tim in Texas, gotcha. Uh, anybody else? Audio check. Just quick audio check, and then we'll get this thing going here. Sounds good. Perfect. All right. <clears throat> that means I can have a little bit of a fan blowing on me. Like I said, it's 90 degrees in my garage. It was 109 when I got home yesterday, 105 today, so uh, it's, it's a bit warm out. So, all right, uh, with that, uh, we got, uh, got OBS figured out a little bit. Do a couple announcements while I'm uh, waiting for a couple other people to jump in there. Uh, the first thing is, is uh, I want to I recognize Dennis, 86DM. Uh, Dennis hooked a brother up. I am now on Reflector 12 Alpha on a pretty regular basis on D-Star. Uh, and a large part of that is because Dennis uh, made a contribution to me and the channel and uh, hooked me up with a, a Pi Star uh, hotspot for my ID5100. And uh, so what would happen is that I'm driving home from work. Uh, I'd start a D-Star conversation. You'd see me on Twitter. And if you're not following me on Twitter, you should be because I do a lot of stuff on Twitter, of course. And then uh, as soon as I get the party started, I would drop out because I'd be going through a canyon. And then uh, by the time I picked it up on the other side of the canyon, all the boys were kind of going home. So <laughs> uh, this has been able to give me the last two days to get through that canyon pretty good. So I've been able to talk to quite a few people, and, uh, and that's pretty awesome. So Dennis, thank you so much for that. I really appreciate that. All right, Dennis is on there. Got you. Don, see you in there. All right, cool. I got my, my, uh, my system figured out a lot better this week than I did last week. So uh, good to go. So the other thing... Uh, I'm going to talk a little bit about soda tonight. I'm going to give an overview, not a little bit, it's all about soda. It's soda Explained. It's a high-level overview of what soda or summits on the air is all about. I'm going to break it down to some of the basic principles. And depending upon where some of this chat goes, I may even kind of dig a little deeper in some of the other areas on subsequent uh, live streams as, uh, as needed or as wanted. Uh, but, you know, I get a lot of questions or I'll see on different Facebook uh uh, pages that I frequent, you know, what, what is soda? Even on some of the big ones like, you know, ham radio uh, 2.0 or something like that, uh, you'll hear people just still, it's still kind of new, still floating around in, in, uh, in the United States. But uh, the soda or summits on the air, I'm going to talk about what a chaser is. I'm going to talk about what an activator is, talk about where it came from and how you can find more information to dig deeper. I pulled a lot of the resources off of just this, the soda website. Uh, so a lot of stuff is, is, uh, is directly piped right into my, my presentation for tonight just because I want you to see the familiar language and why recreate the wheel. So uh, Summits on the Air is something I found after being a ham for, uh, I think it would be 15 years. But I've been doing soda now. July of 2014 is when I first started Summits on the Air. And so I've been doing it now for, well, yeah, four years. Uh, I did take about a year off one time, just got busy with life and whatnot. But uh, it, it's, it's a, probably the most rewarding thing I've done with ham radio. Uh, you know, you hear a lot about field day and hams get out and they do field day or field day weekend, if you will, the, the weekend in June. But soda or summits on the air is field day every single time you go out. Uh, you're perfecting the operation of in, in portable configuration. Um, you're experimenting with antennas, locations. You, you're learning a ton about propagation and radio. Uh, you're learning about spotting. You're making friends and connecting with other people all over the United States or the world or wherever you're from. Uh, so soda has probably been... Uh, the most enjoyable thing I've ever done with ham radio and I want to share it So that's kind of what this channel is really all about and that's what tonight's presentation is about is I want to expose as many people as I can to soda and Be here as a sounding board. There's a lot of resources out there not just myself But a lot of other people and I kind of expose those people who are just stumbling on this video for the first time Whether it be in a live chat system right now or if you find this video later on and you want to know what soda is about that's what this is all about tonight. So uh, I see Matt's in there, uh, KN6 MAT, Matt, the hot-footed hiker. Uh, good to see you, Matt. Glad you joined us. Uh, hopefully some of the stuff tonight will help you out. I know you're kind of getting started in this. And uh, let's get on over to some of the presentation real quick. Um, so let's do a couple of announcements real quick before I get going here, though. Uh, I am planning an Oregon trip. I'm going to go up there. I have two weekends selected in August next month. 
the first one being August 10th, which is a Friday, to the 13th, which is a Monday. Uh, Monday and Friday will be travel days for me. Saturday and Sunday will be uh, getting to where I want to activate and activating pretty hard for 48 hours potentially. So uh, I've been looking at a bunch of different areas. Uh, I kind of bumped into another guy, Evan. He's on here on YouTube, and uh, he found me on Twitter as well. So Evan, uh, freshly minted ham not too long ago. He's 18 years old now, lives up in the, in the, the south of the Portland area, and uh, you know, kind of got the idea of like, well, let me pick a peak up there because I flew up there here recently. I passed by Mount Hood. You guys probably saw the picture on my Twitter feed, and I was like, man, I need to get up here and do some activating because it's got to be a lot cooler up in Oregon than it is down here because it's bloody hot down here. So get up in some higher elevations, some greater north uh, uh, latitude, longitude zones, and uh, go play up there in just some new country uh, is kind of the goal. But Oregon, so either the 10th to the 13th, or I think it's the 24th to the 27th, that, that weekend, a couple weeks later. Um, I've invited a few people, but anybody who wants to go can go. I decided to change location. I was looking at Mount Hood. I was looking at Mount St. Helens. Uh, and I think where I settle that right now is Crater Lake, uh, Crater Lake National Park, because... If I want to bring a bunch of new people there, what better place than a national park? Because even if you can't do soda and you don't, you don't want to do all the different peaks that I'm looking at, you can operate in the national park and you can do the NOTA or, or Parks on the Air or POTA. That's what it is. You can do that from there. Uh, Crater, Crater Lake is a beautiful place. If you've never been there, I'd highly encourage you to think about tagging along. If you're interested in that, uh, obviously jump in the live feed here. Hit me up on Twitter, DM me, whichever. I do prefer that we communicate kind of in an open forum, whether it be on the comment section of this YouTube video or if we're going to uh, do it on Twitter so that other people can see the questions that are asked and answered and then we can kind of get a, a little bit of information going there. I may even do a poll on my Twitter feed to kind of get a couple different ideas on that. But right now it's Crater Lake and I'm really looking hard at the 10th and 13th. If you're interested in that, let me know. Uh, the next thing is... Um, couple other things to help support the channel. You know, Dennis did me a solid by sending me that hotspot. Uh, I've had Tony, K9RV, has sent me an antenna. I've got it hanging out in my backyard. That's the one I'm uh, using right now. It's a pretty neat little antenna. Uh, uh, Josh Hostasi, he's, he's given me a couple of, uh, of MFJ Big Ears. I've tried those. And uh, a couple other people have really helped me out with some things. I, I appreciate everybody's contributions. Um, and another way you can help me out is shopping on my uh, page, my HQD gear page. And I'm going to show you real quick what that looks like so you can see. Um, my website is kg6hqd.us. Uh, on this web page, you will see that uh, I have a variety of things to uh, buy. Um, it doesn't affect anybody uh, as far as extra prices. If you're not familiar with an Amazon affiliate, that's all this is. Uh, I advertise on here, and uh, just simply for advertising, they give me a little bit of a kickback. Somebody tell me if this is scrolling. I'm doing an interaction, but when I do this, it, it doesn't show me the full side. So if this is scrolling, put a comment in saying, yes, uh, we see the web page scrolling. Uh, I would appreciate that. But you can see I'm going to scroll all the way down to the bottom for a reason. Put a variety of things on here, camera gear, uh, you know, different solar stuff that I use. People always ask me about my hat. But the number one thing people ask me about, you know, everybody's got a number one item on their affiliate store. And for me, I'm going to go fast because I'm going to get down to the very, very bottom. And if you can see this, hopefully, is this bamboo telescoping fishing pole. And it is $16.89 on Amazon Prime. And uh, that's, that's the money right there. Everybody asked me about that. So it looks like it did scroll. I'm assuming it did. I'm going to go ahead and look over at the comments. And uh, sweet, scrolling. Good. That's what I need to know. All right. Uh, so anyway, so that is the, uh, the, the HQD gear page. Even if you buy something else, if you click through, then you go through there. If you're not familiar with Amazon, anything you buy within that short period of time helps me. Uh, I've also had a few other people asking about Super Chat. Uh, you know, Super Chat is alive and well now, and I'm eligible for that. Uh, so if you do a Super Chat, I'm going to keep popping back to the comment section here so I can see those questions. I'll stop what I'm doing, and I will answer your question on the Super Chat. So don't forget that Super Chat down there on the bottom, a uh, little thing you hit it just for a buck or two or whatever you feel like you want to do. Uh, that'll, that'll get my attention and I'll come to your question first and I will uh, answer your question. If I don't know it, I'll make it up. I've, I've said that before, but no, in all seriousness, I'll, I'll have a pretty good answer, I'm sure, unless you ask me some wazoo things. I think somebody asked me about the winning lottery numbers and I wish I knew that the other night here in California it was $522 million. So back to the main ticker here. Uh, so the shop at the HQD store. Other thing, YouTube comments. If you're going to make a comment in the YouTube section, uh, do me a favor, do everybody a favor, because people use different things for their, their Google name. 
uh, put your call sign in your name so that I can start making recognition because if I ever work you on a summit one day, you're like, yeah, I follow on YouTube and I have no idea what your call sign is. I mean, I'll probably forget anyway because <laughs> there are quite a few people and I, I'm really good with faces and not names, but it starts becoming familiar for me and I would appreciate that. And you never know, you might work each other on, on the channel as well. So uh, put your name and your call sign. If you like putting where you're from, that's cool too. So I'd appreciate that. Uh, the other thing too is what would you like to see on uh, on my website, what would you like to see me do on my uh, uh, YouTube live streams? Uh, what kind of different video topics do you want? All that kind of stuff. You can put them in the comments below right here. You can hit me with Twitter. Uh, you can send me emails, uh, however you like. I'll, I capture that data and I keep notes and I make notes on all these things and then I circle around to them, uh, time permitting how much time I have. I'm trying to make uh, live streams a weekly thing because of the engagement and get you guys get your questions answered right away uh, And that's another question for you guys um, What would be the best day of the week and what would be the optimum time now when you give me your time? You got to give it to me in your your time zone uh, You know I was talking to Tony K9 ARV in Florida and I was talking to Gabe and when UFO up in Brooklyn Clearly they're three hours ahead of me. So thanks for sticking around this late at night guys um, But I need to find a sweet spot I'm half thinking that Mondays would be a great day to do live streams because I'm off on Mondays. So if I needed to back it up, that would work so I can help our East Coast brethren. Uh, but, you know, 6 o'clock, 5 o'clock, you know, uh, just anyways, give me what that is. Maybe I'll do a poll on Twitter and uh, if I see if I can capture that data and I really kind of try to figure out what I can do to be in your channel when you want me there. Uh, videos I can see. Oh, calendar of events. So another thing I'll be adding to my webpage, kg6hqd.us, will be... Uh, a, a calendar page. I'll be putting on there my planned activation dates, the trips that I'm going to do. Like I'm going to Oregon, I'll put that in there. Uh, if I'm going to do Hamcation or if I'm going to do Pacific Con or if I'm going to do any of these different kind of events, I'm going to try to put those in there. If I am going to do an activation, I'll, I'll put a lot more information in there about um, what frequencies I plan to operate on, uh, just more information. You know, hey, I've got Kevin going with me, uh, W6RIP, we're going to try to work uh, two different peaks or whatever it is. I'm going to try to put more information into the calendar. I was playing with that earlier today and uh, widgets and plugins and stuff like that. I just didn't get it pulled off in time for today's live stream, but I am working on a calendar so you can have those events. Uh, also, uh, somebody had asked me for a list of my common freaks, my frequencies. Um, I, I have no problem giving you the frequencies I use. I'm, I'm on the PAPA system now uh, here in California, P-A-P-A -A, uh, as PAPA and then S-Y-S, you know, T-E-M, PAPASystem.org. Uh, if you go into the PAPA system, you can find all the frequencies there. Uh, but I think I might just put a small little section on there because they do have the XRF reflector on there. If you're on D-Star, if you're on analog, you can always find me. If you're local, I have all my local machines in there. And I don't plug up my HT with a ton of different frequencies. So just FYI, because I use that HT for my soda activations. I don't be scrolling all over the place looking for them. But I do keep some of the big ones in there. And I may talk about it a little bit tonight of why I only have so many frequencies in there. Um, but, you know, it, it is one of the things I'm, I'm willing to put on there. Uh, the other thing, too, is if you're interested in seeing this presentation outside of this live stream, just the presentation on the keynote that I'm going to do, uh, I can also start putting those into my webpage, just archives if you ever wanted to use them and take them and modify them or whatever you want to do. So just uh, food for thought on that right there. Let's check the uh, comments real, sec real quick to see what's going on. Let's see here. Somebody wants to see more of the KX2 tips and tricks. Uh, I like that. All right, that's good. I can do with that. And can't do Mondays. Mondays are fine. All right, cool. More activations. All right, that's good. Less music in the audio. <laughs> Less music in the audio is much louder than your voice. All right, yeah, I am, I'm kind of working on that. So, uh, you know, I'm trying to switch it up and do some different things, and I'm learning. I'm learning fast and on the fly. Uh, thanks, Dean. Appreciate it, man. All my, all my first responder brothers out there and all my veteran brothers, too, out there. So appreciate all your guys' service. APRS. Okay, I'm going to go back to these comments later on then. Keep, keep throwing them down in there because they'll pop up later on. Um, but I'm going to open up the presentation, and I'm going to get started on that right now. So let's do this. All right, so Soda Explain. This is what tonight's all about. I've, I've given 13 minutes for most people to get into the, uh, the live stream here. So what is Soda? I kind of talked about it when I first opened. Summit's on the air. Soda. Uh, you know, this started in the UK back in, uh, I think it was 2002, March of 2002, uh, and all this information is on their website, and I'm going to give you that link here in just a second, because then I want you to go there, I want you to scour it, I want you to join the reflector, I want you to learn about SodaWatch, I'm going to throw all that at you, but 
the Soda website is still a UK-based website. It's a UK-based uh, gaming scheme, if you will. Um, but a couple guys got the idea of going out and hiking on top of hills and operating portable and developing a point system for the person that goes out and hikes the hill, being the activator, and the person that is not on the hill, whether you're driving mobile, whether you're uh, three, 400 yards down the hill on an HT, whether you're at your base station or across the world. Uh, that's the chaser. There's awards specific for the activator, the hill climber, and the chaser, the person who is trying to contact the person on the hill. There's, a, there's awards, there's point schemes for both, and that's what we're going to kind of touch on as we go through this thing. So the website, as promised, right there, uh, soda.org.uk will take you to all this information that you need to know. Uh, all of their PDF websites are on there. A lot of their, uh, they have a soda uh, what do they call it? The soda store. I forget what the name of the store is, but um, they have a bunch of gear that you can buy. Uh, oh man, I'm actually drawing a blank on what it is. Somebody in the comments, throw it out there. What is it? Kevin out there? What's the name of the soda store? Uh, anybody? Anybody? Soda store. Plus five, you get the soda store. Uh, anyways, there's a soda store on there. It'll come back to me later on, probably at midnight tonight. But you can buy some different things on there, different dipoles, different antennas. There's a variety of things that you can buy on there if you so desire, or you can make your own. You can buy t-shirts, hats, stickers, all kinds of stuff. So check it out. Um, let's see. So that's one thing you can do on there. Let's go into the other things. So introduction to chasing. This is what we're going to cover tonight. Uh, chasing, I kind of touched on it briefly. I'm going to talk about a little bit more. A little bit about activating. Um, some of the nuances of activating because you are outdoors. You're hiking in the mountains. Uh, the award schemes. You know, what are the award schemes and why? Why are, why are you even doing this? Uh, the general rules. I kind of, you know, rules are rules almost call them guidelines, but there are parameters in any contesting thing that you do. Well, this isn't your typical ham radio contest. This is more of a personal challenge is how I see it. You're challenging yourself. And of course, there's other soda activators that, you know, you'll see like, I'll be honest with you, I'm doing 100% uniques until I get to Mountain Goat. So this stuff will make sense later. So right now, if I look on the Whiskey 6 zone, the zone in my area, I am the number one person for 100% activators. There's guys that have, uh, you know, 500 more peaks than me accomplished, but every peak that I've done is a unique. So that puts me, I think, in the 13 spot, if I remember right, out of all the Whiskey 6 soda activators in the Whiskey 6 zone, which is pretty much California, I'm the 13th person with 81 peaks I think I've done. Um, so that's a personal goal for me, and you can come up with your own personal goals. You can, you can do so many different things with this. This is what's a kick in the pants. And the reason why I bring it up is because you know, I, I get people on YouTube and Twitter that tell me that, hey, I've got no mountains. Hey, Mike in Michigan, K8MRD. Ah, he's having a blast, by the way. Mike, if you don't watch his channel, check it out. K8MRD radio stuff. But he's been kind of doing like uh, the Weird Al Yankovic <laughs> of, uh, of soda. But he's, gone, he's done like a parking lot on the air. He's done a, a soda peak that wasn't a soda peak, but he did a summit on the air anyway. You know what he's doing? He's going out, he's playing radio, and he's having fun, man. And that's, that's cool stuff. So good on you for that, Mike. Um, but you know, Tony, Tony's in Florida. He's got no peaks, but he goes out. He's out today operating portable. If you're not following Tony, K9 ARV, you got to follow Tony. Uh, he does a lot of portable operations. He, he's all, he got all kinds of gear. I don't know how he gets so much gear. I think eBay and different things. Um, but anyways, Tony's out doing a bunch of stuff. Uh, there's a bunch of guys out there. Of course, uh, Steve Galchuk in Colorado, you know, WG Zero Alpha Tango, basically Whiskey Goat. Uh, and he's the guy that got a lot of us into this. I mean, he spurred me to get into this. And then from me doing it, I've spurred a couple other people like Kevin and a couple other guys to do it. So it's like the domino effect. You got you to spread the word. You got to get out there. But there's, there's other people out there, other channels out there. And I've got them linked on my channel. But you've got to check out uh, what these different people are doing. So the general rules, there are rules of the game. But it's also on the honor system. We're going to talk about all that. Soda beams. That's it. Uh, that's, that's one of what I was thinking of. Thanks there. Uh, so the other thing, environmental considerations. Um, yeah, I'm going to touch on it. It's not going to take long, but I think it'll make sense. It's, it's more than picking up your trash when it comes to being a ham radio operator out of these peaks. So keep that in mind. Uh, guidelines. Uh, so you got general rules and you got some guidelines, some things. And then of course, we got some frequently asked questions. So uh, I picked some of the frequently asked questions from the SOTA site specifically. You will see I just basically cut and pasted some of them into the presentation. Um, because they're common questions, one. And I even added a couple more that I've gotten from the community. So you'll see those different questions coming in here. All right, so let's get started. <clears throat> Introduction to chasing. First of all, anybody can participate in soda. Anybody, no matter your fitness level. Uh, this is chasing. So we're starting out with chasing first. 
This is the person that is not climbing the hill. You are anywhere but on top of the hill. So again, you can sit in your shack, you can have a disability, you cannot drive, you can be blind, you can be whatever. You can participate in soda because regardless, even if you don't have hills to activate, you can participate in chasing. There is no soda without chasers. We need chasers, we need activators, we need both. So don't think that because you're not out activating, if you have some kind of limitation, whether it be a geographic or physical or whatever it is, don't think that your role in soda is not important. I, I can't stress that enough. Um, you know, even if you go out and you operate portable and chase portable, uh, I think those are like gold mines. You know, as a QRP enthusiast, when you're doing summits on the air, generally speaking, it's QRP, generally speaking. Uh, when you find another QRP station, that's why a lot of uh, summits on the air guys get excited about a summit to summit. So that's two activators activating two different peaks, and they do a summit to summit. Uh, that's, those are like striking gold out there, as is contacting somebody like when I talked to Tony for the first time, you know, QRP to QRP from California mountaintop to Florida flatlands. That's one of my all-time favorite activations simply because of the uniqueness behind that. So anybody can do this, no matter your fitness level. I get a lot of that on the fitness level. Um, and I don't want to be rude, but I'll even say so much as that notoriously, uh, a lot of hams are not, uh, they're not like over-the-top triathlons. I'm going to put it like that. Um, Generally speaking, it's just not a very highly active crowd as a, as a general rule. It's painting with a broad brush. I realize that. But also understand that you can still do it. And there's smaller peaks. There's drive up 10 point peaks where you can stop 100 yards shy of the summit, get out and walk. We're going to talk about those are the rules I'm talking about, the, the ways you have to do certain things so that you can live with yourself knowing that you did it on the honor system. But there's, there's, there's 10 point peaks and there's one point peaks that you can get to, whether it be by bicycle or horseback. Or whatever it is, there's a way to do it. So don't think for a second that you can't do this. You absolutely can. Next thing, equipment needs. I get a lot of people asking me, hey, you know, I'm a brand new ham. I only have a, 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 the, the B word, that type of radio, and, uh, or a Yesu, or a variety of things. Um, only to, most people say, I only have an HT. That's what it comes down to. I only have an HT. Can I do soda? The answer is yes, absolutely, 100%. In fact, most of my activations in the initial side were with an HT just simply because I was exploring what it was. I will say, and we'll go into equipment a little bit more, but there are ways to enhance your success rate even if you have an HT and, and to make yourself more successful. But you can do it no matter what if you have a, a ham radio of some sort. You can do some what's on the air. So keep that in mind. Equipment needs an HT. The, the cheapest, smallest thing you've got will work. Homebrew antennas go right with that. So equipment needs. Points and awards, um, like I said, there, there are points and awards assigned to activators and chasers. And the equivalent thing is there's a bunch of little steps on the way up to the, what's, what's the most common award sought after is the Shack Sloth is the award for chaser at 1,000 chased points. And the Mountain Goat is the activator's 1,000 uh, points. <clears throat> Clearly... Uh, one creates, uh, one requires a lot more energy than the other, but a thousand points each. The other thing is too, is when you're out activating and you're doing those summit to summits or you're contacting other people, you can also be a chaser. There's, I keep my radio on in the garage for right now as I'm doing this on 520, 146.520 all the time in the garage and, and the pop-up system. And, uh, I'll be out here tinkering around the garage and I hear summits on the air and I'll, I'll answer back. And there's guys out here that go out regularly. I know them. And it's good for them, and it's just good in case the wilderness protocol kicks in. But yeah, so uh, to be a good activator, you got to be a good chaser too. So absolutely, uh, there's points and awards for both, and there's a couple that you can uh, take right there is the Shack Slot. So how do you find these activators? Um, on that website there, if you go, you'll find a tab that is called the, the Soda Watch. The Soda Watch is the self-spotting network. So when I do APRS to Soda, or some people will spot for me, or if I use the app Soda Goat, somebody asked me in the comment section a minute ago about the app. If I use that app Soda Goat, I can self-spot. Now, generally speaking, if you've read your ham radio books, uh, they tell you that when you're doing contesting in the ham radio world, self-spotting is kind of frowned upon. When you're doing soda, it's not. Uh, in fact, if you want to be successful, you better find a way to spot because when you're QRP, it really gives you a leg up. I mean, you can do it without, I've done it without, but I found my greatest success are with, with spotting. So you bump against time frames, weather issues, variety of things, you want to put it out there. And you know what, the chasers want you as much as you want them. So you kind of, you, you bring it together quicker and you get it done. So uh, that's Soda Watch web uh, database, you'll see 
It's all in UTC time. Um, if you don't have the app Soda Goat, uh, there's another video. I'll link it later on. Let's see, my right, your left, something like this. I'll link that video later on over here. It'll be how to log the quick way, the, the secret to logging fast. Uh, but I do have a video on how to do that, and it's really simple because logging is part of this. Um, but you can see right now that there's different people on all bands, any mode. Uh, the only thing you can't do is talk to a terrestrial repeater, and I'll talk about that more in just a minute. But any band, any mode, FT8, yes, you can do that. Uh, digital mode, anything, you can do all kinds of stuff. So, all right, introduction to activating. Uh, you can see this little picture right here. The big thing about activating, of course, is clearly that you need to plan. Um, you have to plan to be successful in anything you do, and this is going to take hard work. You're going to be outdoors. You're going to be in the elements. You could be in an extreme environment. You could be in a docile environment, but you should plan. So, again, same thing as the other one. Anybody can do this. If you want to do this, you can. Even if you start off in baby hills. Let's just say you're not in the greatest shape in the world. This is a way to help yourself have something to do. The treadmills are boring. Running on the concrete is boring. For me, boring. Can't do it. Sorry, Eric, uh, K0EAP. I can't do it, man. I did my time running in the military. Boring. Okay? But I go hiking. I am lost in la-la land. I put on more miles when I'm out there hiking on these hills and having a good time. You can pick your elevations. Learn how to read maps. So you get more out of uh, soda then you do just ham radio. You get the ham radio aspect, but you get the fitness aspect. You get the camaraderie aspect. You get the technical side of building antennas if you're into that. Uh, you can share all your stuff on YouTube like I'm doing, so you get all that. You get to keep living it back. I mean, there's so much to soda that it, it's an absolute blast. Uh, how many states back in Nevada, California, I think Oregon. I think I did Oregon one. So two to three right now. I'm going to fix that, though, there, Dean. Uh, plan is to get out and about. I'm going to talk about that in just a minute, too, about my plan to get around a little bit more. So, uh, but anybody can do this. You can pick small hills that are gentle walk-ups, like I said, or you can pick the most rugged thing of K2. Um, these peaks are all over the world, and, and there's a soda mapping system, and you can see how many points each peak's worth, and I'm going to talk about how points are assigned here in a minute, but you can kind of develop your own system uh, and do it however you want. It is one of the greatest things ever. So, gear. What gear do you need to activate? You need probably some form of a small backpack if you're going to go carrying up there. Uh, you need, a, at a minimum, an HT. Uh, you can use your rubber duck. I would encourage you to look at some of the roll-up J-poles or some of the, the arrow beams or make a tape measure Yagi of some sort. Um, make a vertical. You know, it goes make, make, make. You hear that a lot. So you can do a lot of different things if you want to. Um, but it's, it's one of the things that gear is, is you find out what you need based upon the environment you're in. Um, you know, you could need, like I needed micro spikes this year. I had to get micro spikes to walk on ice. I don't do a lot of that. Tony, that's weird stuff to you, I know. Oh no, you're from New York. You know about that. But I had to get micro spikes, trekking poles, a backpack. If I'm going to camp overnight, I got my camping gear. But see, I enjoy all that side of it too. The camping and the hiking is just as much fun for me as the activating and all the stuff. So it's multiple hobbies rolled into one. And I'm also out scouting new areas to hunt, checking out new ponds to fish. I mean, you name it, it all comes together. So gear. Uh, well, you know, go back to my HQD gear page on my website like I told you about. <clears throat> you can see some of the stuff that I've got in there. But gear needs are very, very minimum in the grand scheme of things. If you are a general or above, or if you're a tech and you want to play on 10 meters, you know, consider an, uh, picking up a used 817 or a KX2 or an X105 or, or anything. Do your research on those different items and find out, hey, you know, this is what I want to do. Tag along with somebody like me or somebody else that's into soda or somebody else who does portable ops like Tony in Florida. There's so many different things that you can do. Uh, gear is kind of up to you. You don't have to have a bunch of gear. Outdoor skills, you need to have. You need to have some sense of outdoor skills because if you don't, you can get yourself in trouble. Uh, again, know your own limitations. You should know how to read a map and a compass if you're going deep into the woods. If you're staying on a trail in a known park and it's all right there, great. Uh, but, you know, I still encourage you to at least have a map and a compass. Think about, you know, the 10 essentials. Look at the hiking form that I've got on my website. It's a downloadable form. It gives you some ideas, some things to bring. Uh, you should prepare for the elements. I mean, you know, you know the train that you're going in and prepare accordingly. And if you're not sure, do a little bit of research into those areas or ask somebody who's more experienced than you. Go to REI. Uh, that's one of the big places in the, in the United States. I know over here for sure that huge resources. There's books out there. Know what you're getting into. <clears throat> The outdoor skills, they come with time. You can hone them. You can develop them. Uh, and they're just good skills to have. For the prepper community, 
this stuff should all make perfect sense to you. Uh, mapping and planning, uh, like I was saying, I'm going to talk. This is one of the topics that I might go into a little deeper. I've had people ask me about, hey, can you help me with uh, understanding how to read maps and stuff like that? There's a lot of information out there on how to do that. Um, I'm thinking about how I want to do it. Um, you know, military days are always what I come back to on land navigation, nighttime navigation, and all that fun stuff, and, you know, the Rawls and Lars and angles of deviation and different things. And that goes whew, just like that over a lot of people's head unless you sat down and done it. Now, how I would do that on a YouTube thing, I don't know yet. But um, there is some information out there. And, uh, you know, if you're interested in that, you want me to do more, again, hit me on Twitter or put it in the comment section down below. Um, but planning, you, you have to plan. You, you should always plan what you're doing. I always know what summit I want to go to, when I'm going to leave, when I'm going to come back. And I leave all that stuff on that hiking form or uh, I leave notes with my wife before I develop that hiking form. I always tell her where I'm going to be. So look for that kind of stuff. Uh, logging in points as an activator, um, you know, if you didn't log it, it didn't happen. So you have to log. Uh, again, that video that I talked about, uh, how to log a soda contact, I got two of them. I'll pop them both up right here. When I do uh, edit this thing later on, I'll add those cards later. But I'll have one on how to log a soda contact, what I'm going to call it now the hard way, because it's going manual, one by one, entering it into the soda website, or doing a CSV file upload if you're using uh, Hamlog which is the app that I use to do my logging. It has a little 73 icon on it. Um, that's the, the app that I use. And then I also use uh, Soda Goat just to spot and alert and look for summits. So, yes, breathe. Read your followers' text. Breathe. All right. I saw that, Dean. Let me see here. Ed Fong, Roll of j -Pool. Absolutely, 100%. Um, Tony, everybody saying hi to each other. Keep on going. Drive to it. Trump's equipment to do. <laughs> I suppose. Uh, let's see here. You were bumping heads with Ham Nation tonight. Really? Okay, so their show just ended. Their show just ended, I assume? Well, that's good. Uh, okay, that's good to know. Forward to that. All right. Thanks, Dean. I, I do need that. I, when it's 90 degrees out here, and I know your time is valuable, and I got guys on the East Coast, I guess I'm going fast. I talk fast anyway, uh, but you're right. I do need to slow down and drink some water, and then every so often a little bit of a, you know, Good stuff. All right. Map tools make great navigation aids. Yes, they do. Um, I like GIA G -A -I -A GPS uh, is a website. I subscribe to that for 30 bucks a year. It's one of the, the best mapping things that I, uh, I have found, and I absolutely love it. The thing I like about it most is that it's on my phone. I put my phone in airplane mode. It still works. I save all the maps, multiple layers, into my phone, so I don't have to worry about it uploading and downloading. Uh, and the most awesomest thing about it, in my opinion, is that I can do it all on my PC or my, my MacBook, and it synchronizes right to my phone. Anything I do when I'm out on the trail synchronizes to my, my uh, online account, and that, that I like a lot. So, uh, logging and points. So, I'm going to kind of talk about that. So, you're not going to get the points unless you log, but I'm going to talk about how many contacts and all that kind of fun stuff that you have to do. All right. Like I just said, if you didn't document it, you didn't do it. Uh, logging your contacts, you have to do that. Both activators and chasers, if you want the points. And I'm going to add, it's not in this text here, but I am going to add that uh, there are also shortwave listeners. So you'll see SWL, shortwave listener. Uh, it means they just heard you, and they can do the same kind of thing. So, it, you know, SOTA is an all-inclusive kind of thing. Uh, so as an activator chaser or an SWL, shortwave listener, if you want the points, you got to log it. Uh, that also gives you the ability to confirm the QSOs with one another. Um, uh, you know, I don't, I don't contest. Even if I make an HF contact outside of SOTA, I don't log it generally. And the only contacts that I log are my SOTA contacts. I, I used to log a bunch of things. I did the OMIS thing for a while, the 1010 thing for a while. and That was fun. Uh, I had a good time. Um, but now I am just 100% all in, drank the Kool-Aid. I am all in on SOTA. Therefore, all my contacts are all in the SOTA website. And now when I use my phone on the, on the I'm using my phone for Keynote right now, um, which is the presentation, but <clears throat> now when I put my contacts into that Hamlog app, it syncs right to my MacBook. So they're backed up there as well. But once I put them on the Soto website, I, I kind of, that's all I care about. All I care about is that I, I get my points and I'm good with Soda. All right, let's see here. I have to look, I have the book Green Brace Compass. Um, yeah, there are lots of stuff out there. And da, 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 a little late to the party. Hey, what's going on, Mike? Good to see you here, buddy. 
Agree on Gia, yes, uh, Jeff. That Gia app. If you don't, if you haven't even checked it out, check it out. G A I A uh, GPS dot com. I think it is. It's an excellent resource for mapping. Um, let's see here. Apps. Okay, so I already talked about the Gia app. I talked about Soda Goat. That is an actual app, more for spotting alerts, summits. It's not for logging though. Um, but it's more for like a planning tool, kind of show you like nearby to you, kind of shows you what the summits are in the area. And it, it taps right into the spotting and the alerting and the mapping stuff a little bit. So uh, 73, or I should say Hamlog, which has a 73 icon on it. Gia is the other one. Those are the apps that I, that I use for, uh, for my soda stuff. But that's also how you can, you can do your logging. Uh, or direct entry, like I already mentioned. All right, the awards. So first, again, log your QSOs, because the only way you're going to get your awards to be eligible for them is if the SOTA database has your QSOs and your contacts, I'm sorry, your QSOs slash contacts log in the, in the uh, database as a chaser. You only need to talk to the activator once on the hill. Activator, you got to make your four contacts, and we're going to talk about that a little bit more. But if you have to have those things logged, and they show when you activated, uh, all the people you talk to, it's everything you put in. And then uh, it matches up with the chasers on the other side if they so desire. So uh, let's see here. A uh, thousand points. So SS, that is not the bad SS, that is Shaq Sloth, or MG is the Mountain Goat. Again, the awards are the same. There are awards in between, lots of other awards. And if you go on that, that website that I told you about, soda.uk.org or soda.org.uk, whichever it was, um, it will show you an awards page and you can see all the different awards that are available to you. In addition to that, you know, you have what's called an MT is the management team on like, think of that as corporate for soda. And then you have, uh, hold on one second, busy, go the other way. Um, so you have, teenage daughter come home, wants to interrupt, sorry. Uh, so you have MT, the management team, they are in the UK, they are the ones that oversee all of the, uh, um, the regional managers. So like I said, I, I am in the Whiskey Six region, you know? So there's a regional manager for this area, and then within that region you have sub-regions, if you will, like the Central Traverse Zone, there's a manager for that zone. So it's, it's broken down so that, you know, it's not overbearing for too many people, but you have all those different people that you can uh, use as a resource for a lot of different things. And, and they each individually have different awards at 250 points or 500 points, you know, at not just a thousand points, but 2,500 points, 5,000 points, and so on. So the awards keep going. Then you have uniques, and there's so many different awards. So if you're one of those people like having trophies on your wall, uh, I don't have very many, uh, but if you like having trophies on your wall, there you go. There's a way to do it. I'm going to show you what some of these things look like in just a second. I just kind of talked about other awards in the area, but most importantly for me, this is a personal goal. You know, when you start something, you want to finish it. Uh, four years of doing this, and granted, I took a year off. Then there's sometimes I take a couple months off because it is stupid hot here right now. A lot of snakes. I only taking my dog out during the snake season. Um, and then you have to carry a lot of water in Southern California because there's no water around here. But uh, to me, it's a personal goal. It's something to achieve, and I'm taking my time. Initially, yes, when I go to Crater Lake, I plan on doing five summits, five eight point summits inside of 36 hours. Uh, yeah, about 36 hours total time hiking around. I'm going to be busy doing that, and that's, that's a bam, 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 but for a reason. Uh, but I was doing that initially, two and three summits a day, uh, every weekend, and then you kind of burn out. Every, I think everybody hits that burnout a little bit. And uh, so then I started slowing down. I was talking about this with Kevin in, Kevin W6REP, and with um, Steve, WG0 Alpha Tango. And, and we talked about enjoying the ride and the journey is more important than just the destination of each peak. And so I purposely slow myself down. So that I remember, and I can tell you this, there's peaks I can't wait to go back to after I'm done with my 100% unique goal. Um, and there's some that I'll never go back to either, bushwhacking peaks specifically. But, you know, I've been to some peaks like the one I did with Josh. Um, I'd, have, I'd have never gone over to that area had it not been for soda. I'd have never gone up there. And I was very thankful that I did. It wasn't like the most spectacular peak, but it was a peak that was right in my backyard that I'd, I'd never been on. And now I can say when I drive by that one, I've been there. And when I was up there, we had a bunch of people show up. Uh, a bunch of girls came up hiking, um, some ladies, I should say. And they started asking about ham radio. So you get to be an ambassador and you get to share what you're doing. We'll talk a bit more about that in a little bit. But then I got to the point, they asked me like, hey, what's a good peak to, to do this on, to do that? I'm like, well, what are you looking for? And once I was able to point at almost every single major peak in my area in Southern California, and there's a lot of them, and I can tell them about each one of those trails and I'm reliving those memories. I can tell them about my channel and say, hey, go check it out. 
And that's why I put a lot of the, the music portions of the trail. It's because I'm trying to show people what the trail looks like in case they ever decide to go there, even if they're not into soda, but they're just hikers and they're looking for in, you know, resources and research, if you will. So that's why some of that stuff's in there. All right, so personal goals for me though. And then here's what the awards look like. By the way, you have to buy your own award. Um, you know, I, it comes from England, from, uh, from the UK. Uh, I forget how much it is off the top of my head. If somebody knows, they can put it in there. Uh, that's probably possible, Kyle. A lot of hams quit soda after they achieve mountain goat. What's my view on that? Um, I think you're probably right. Uh, that thought's even entered my mind. Is like, will I? Uh, I don't know. I think what I'll probably do is I'll be less, even more, more or less, how do I say that? I'll be much less focused on which peaks. I'll do probably what Dan does. Dan, NA6MG is a big activator in our area. Or Steve Galchuk, uh, WG Zero Tango. Uh, they go to a lot of the same peaks, their favorite peaks. Is, uh, they just do. They, they really enjoy them. Like I just said a second ago, uh, when I see a lot of these different peaks, I understand uh, you know, the value of going back to those. So Gabe, Gabe hit me with a blue super chat. Thanks, Dave. Can you use DMR or digital capabilities for soda? The answer is yes, as long as you're doing it in simplex mode. You cannot use a repeater. So in other words, if you were in New York and we were hitting the reflector 12 alpha, that would not qualify because we are going through a machine. The only machine, and I'm going to talk about this here in a minute, per the SOTA rules, this is why you got to know the SOTA rules, the only machine that you can utilize are satellites. You can actually make a satellite machine repeater contact, the birdies, and that qualifies. And guess what? I learned that today when I was digging deeper for this. Um, so. See, I, I'm still learning stuff too, and I've never worked the birdies, and now I've got that much more of a reason to do it. So there'll be videos on that when I get around to it. But, um, but you know, if you're doing D-Star Simplex or D DMR Simplex, absolutely, that works. Uh, FT8 works, um, PSK31, anything and everything except for repeaters. That's kind of, uh, Soda is really about promoting ham radio and all modes and getting all people interested. But what they don't want is just rag chewing on machines. What they want is they want to kind of, push out all these other modes and, and get people to think simplex a little bit. Kind of, kind of the root of ham radio, if you ask me. So thanks, that's a good question. Uh, it's one of the ones that uh, you asked it in a little bit unique way, which is great. And thanks for the super chat too. Uh, let's see here, uh, moving on down. I hope you find something else ham radio keep making ham related videos. Kyle, I will be. Uh, if you've noticed in the last few videos and now this is doing some more live streams, um, I'm finding that there's a bigger uh, interest in doing this kind of stuff. A bigger interest in in uh, the how to's and, and the more I'm learning about YouTube um, the more I'm learning of what you guys are wanting and you know Google being the number one search engine, YouTube being the number two search engine. You come here for information generally speaking or how to and to learn something and I think with ham radio I'm like I said I just learned something today about using the birdies but there's so much stuff to learn so many different faucets of this, it's unbelievable that uh, absolutely I think that there is something uh, for everybody in, in, uh, in soda. So part of my goal here is to just get through this first goal. <laughs> but I'm also learning some new things along the way and I'm putting that stuff in there. Hey, what's going on, Kevin? I don't know if you've been in here or not. Uh, what, what are you showing in here, Daniel? Is this, this better not be x-rated. What are you putting in here? Uh, okay, it must be a book or something you're putting in here. Uh, yep, DV modes can do simplex. All right, so back to the presentation. Uh, I will do more ham radio stuff. This channel is not going to die no matter what happens. I'm going to be doing something on ham radio because I'm into boating and hunting and fishing and outdoors, and ham radio has just always been fun. So personal goals. The first one is get through that mountain goat and then do some others after that. So a couple different awards, and you know your buddies can do all kinds of awards for you. The one on the top right there, that, that's like a... Uh, they're, they're uniquely made, they custom make them, they talk about it on the SOTA website. So when you go to the awards page on the SOTA website, look up, look up those awards. There's different ones on there. I think that one I'm showing right there is the Shack Sloth one, and then the bottom one's a Mountain Goat. The typical award for both are, is that top one, that ice block looking um, piece right there. It's all etched and engraved, and if you do certain unique things, you can have that on there as well uh, that you've done specifically. So, moving on, general rules, all right. Everybody loves rules, right? So let's get to the rules. All right. Summit selection. This is one of the areas I've thought about 
uh, digging deeper on on a subsequent video because there's a lot to uh, knowing what how to pick a summit. Uh, and the reason why I bring that up is, you know, maybe I only have two hours. Uh, maybe it's wintertime versus summertime. Summertime in Death Valley is 100 million degrees outside. I mean, it feels like that here right now. But um, you have to consider different things based upon uh, a lot of things, you know, uh, your skill level. Do you have to do vertical ascents? Uh, is it just a leisurely stroll in the park? Are you expecting weather? What if a thunderstorm kicks up? There's so many different things. So for me, summit selection is important because it, Right now, I'm doing 100% uniques. So every time I'm doing one, I'm checking up lists, which narrows down my list of things to do. But I also don't want to spend $100 in gas for one point when I can maximize those points a little sooner here. Although I don't mind flying to Oregon and doing points up there, but that's a whole other story. So some of selection is, uh, it's important to know that, I think what I wanted to talk about on this is, I'm going to use Mike, for example. Mike just went out and he had a good time doing it. And he did, a, he did a summits on the air on a summit that was not a designated summit. If you go to the SOTA website, look for the SOTA mapping page. On there, it shows every single peak by zone. For example, California Whiskey 6, Oregon Whiskey 7. Uh, Whiskey 7 uh, for Washington, it'll say W7 Washington, W7 Oregon. Uh, so there's a bunch of Whiskey 7 zones. There's 5 zones. There's GM zones, DM zones. It all is wherever you're at, you can look them up. So that's how you do it. Find out where you're at uh, on the SOTA mapping site, and then you'll see the closest summits to you. But in order to qualify for the points, in order to be an actual summits on the air activation for everything that I'm talking about tonight, it must be one of the designated peaks in the SOTA database. So you need to go to the SOTA database. You need to look that stuff up before you do it. Um, let's see. Let's see. No, da, 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 da. I found out it was an eight-point summit. <laughs> right. What's the designator? Put the designator in there. Somebody qualify that for me. <clears throat> Maybe. I don't know. You said it was in uh, uh, North Carolina or something like that. One of the Carolinas. I remember right on that video. Okay. Uh, would I activate a summit in Alabama? Yeah. I'm going to get to that in a minute. That's one of my things here. I'm going to talk about here shortly uh, as far as traveling around and looking for some soda hosts, if you will. But uh, are there summits in Alabama to activate? That's the first question. So... I challenge you, Daniel, to uh, find a summit in the zone and, and let me know what you're thinking. Uh, I'd love to fly out there and do that. I'm going to talk about that a little bit later on. Uh, let's see here. Let's see. All right. Donald, no problem. We'll catch you in the next one. Max Patch. No, what's the designator? Designator. Like, uh, you know, Whiskey 6, Stroke, Charlie Tango, 1, 2, 3, 4, or whatever it is. That's what I'm looking for. I know you're pulling my leg there, Mike. That's all good. All right, so soda selection is important. Know that it has to be one of the database to get the points. Now, if you do a soda like what, what Mike did, one that did not have a designate. Oh, he's looking it up. Even though he already said in his video it's not one, but maybe, maybe let's see. <laughs> I think he's kidding me. But let's just say it is. Okay, let's use that example. So Mike went out, K8MRD, went out and did one. Check out his videos on there. He had a blast. He's always goofing on me and Kevin. It's funny. He uses a speaker wire antenna. It works great, proven. And he runs 100 wires through it. And in his videos, you see sparks flying off the side of that speaker wire antenna, right? All right. Uh, so if Mike went out and he activated that summit a couple days ago, last week, whatever it was, and he thought it was not in the database, and he did an activation and he actually logged all those QSOs and wrote all the times and stuff down. But later found out it was in the database. He could load those calls into that and he would actually get the activation for it. Uh, I'm going to look that up. If that's true, that's awesome. Kevin, you're still in here. Look that peak up. Look that peak up for me, Kevin. <laughs> verify. Trust but verify. Um, but anyways, if that's the case, Mike, then cool. You can uh, actually go back and you can log those QSOs into the SOTA website. Boom, you got your activation. Counter to that, if it was not a designated summit in the database, you go out and activate it, and then you, can, you activate in the sense that you did what exactly Mike did. You go out and you do portable operations on the summit, you make more than four contacts, right? Then flash forward a month or a year later, whatever, uh, SOTA says, hey, you know what? We're going to make that a, a SOTA uh, mountaintop and it's going to be worth however many points. It's not retroactive. You would have to go out and activate it again. You don't get the points after, uh, you know, after doing that. You have to redo it after the date that it's been initiated into the database. So just know that. All right. So a couple there in Alabama. Sweet. Uh, if they're there, I'd love to go. I'd love to go back to the south. I was just in Florida last week. I'll go to Alabama and activate, Don. I'll hook up with whoever. Jerry, you pick a state. We'll support sending you there. Really, Dean? 
Oh, man. Uh, well, I don't know. I'm open to all kinds of good ideas with that. You pick a state, and I'll, I'll go there. How about that? Let's see what you come up with. All right, let's see. Going on down central Alabama. So between Daniel and Don, if you got something in Alabama, I'm down. Uh, let's see here. Had a summit QSO from Alabama in the last video. I didn't get to watch that. Uh, that's when uh, I was goofing around trying to figure out some D-Star stuff, and I lost you and Gabe. And uh, I think that's when you uploaded your video. So I haven't watched it yet, but I will tonight or, or tomorrow. All right. Uh, do you announce on multiple readers before switching to 5.2? Uh, that's from uh, Hot Footed Hiker, which is Matt. The answer is it depends. Uh, not generally. I don't go onto a repeater and, and tell people that I'm doing a summits on the air unless I need to. If I cannot get a spot out or if I can't drum up anybody on 5.2 on my own, uh, then yes, I will go to a repeater and I will say, help, bail me out. That's like my lifeline. Uh, then, then I will. But I don't start out doing that, generally speaking. I try working for them first. And the big reason is, is uh, you know, not that I don't want to talk to my buddies on the hill. Um, I'm also looking to make new contacts and introduce people to this. And I've got a, a particular machine I talk on down here that's very active. And when I talk on that one, uh, you know, I'll get 15, 20 guys come over and I'm just, just slamming them. And it's, it, I might as well be talking on the repeater because it, it, they're that awesome of friends and they're that good of a machine. Um, it just makes it too easy. I like a little bit of a challenge. But if I get desperate and I'm not making my contacts and I know I've got to get off the hill, i got weather rolling in, yep, I will I have no shame in that. It is a tactic to deploy, and I think I talked about it in a little bit. So I need to keep on going down the line here. How many points are assigned? Points are not assigned by difficulty level. Bonus points kind of are. So I'm going to talk first about just the points assigned. First of all, if the peak is a 10-point peak, well, let me back up a little bit. Peaks are 1 through 10. That's it. So uh, right here, San Gorgonio is a 10-point peak. Uh, I've done that one. Guess what else is a 10-point peak? Mount Whitney, K2, Kilimanjaro, Everest. They're all 10-point peaks. So when, it's all based on elevation. So there's certain bands of elevation. And once you hit to the next band of an elevation, all that information, because I'm not telling you everything, because I do want you to go to the SOTA website. Just know that. But there's certain bands of elevation that bump it up to the next point level, and then the next point level, and so on, um, until you get to 10. So who gets the 10 points? The activator definitely gets the 10 points, but so does the chaser. Now, if it's during the winter season and you're on top of uh, a, a, a peak that's obviously going to be affected by deep snow and severe and harsh winter uh, regions, well, then you'll probably be eligible for a plus three bonus. I've never seen anything other than a plus three bonus, by the way. Uh, it's not like a plus one because this one's kind of in a severe zone. No, it's usually 10 plus three. I've never seen anything other in, in the ARM or the uh, Association Regional Manager Manual. Um, you'll only see that there. So the point is, is who gets the bonus points? The activator only. That's the person out there putting boots on the ground. They get that plus three. So if I did a 10 point peak in the winter time, I would get 13 points for that peak. As long as I did it during the seasonal period for winter, which is usually, I think it's December 1st to, I think it's March 31st, if I'm not mistaken. So uh, conversely, uh, if I went out to the desert right now and I did a four point peak based on elevation, I could get a plus three for being summertime uh, issues, being extreme weather out in Death Valley. So if it's extreme weather out in Death Valley, then that would bump me into uh, the harsh environment for the summer. Therefore, I'd be eligible for those uh, bonus points. So I'd get seven points total. Um, you know, one of my videos where I lost my dog, the CQ, CQ, I lost my dog. My dog ran off for a little while. Had I done that peak, I think it was the week prior, I would have got, um, I think it was, I would have got seven points instead of, instead of four. It was, it was four plus three, I think is what it was. I would almost doubled my points, basically, had I just done it like a week prior. But, you know, I mentioned in that video, it is what it is. My goal is to go out and do uniques, and that was just the one that I had to do in that period of time. So, uh, but that's how the points are assigned. They're all based on elevation, not on difficulty. And I think, I think Steve, uh, WG0 off of Tango, did, I think it was Pike's Peak. Uh, it was one of the first videos I ever watched of Steve's. He did it with another guy. The wind was blowing, but it's basically a drive up, if I'm not mistaken. If I remember, if, if I remember it's the same peak. I think it was Pike's Peak, drive up, 10 point peak, 10 point peak, drive up. Um, so there you go. 
Uh, it's not based on that. You can have a wheelchair. You can wheelchair yourself the last uh, 100 yards or whatever, operate battery power. You just got your 10 points. Um, so, you know, it, it pays to know how this thing works so that you can work within those rules. Uh, and then also know how the bonus points are. All right. Uh, the bonus points, I already talked about it. Yeah, see, Pike's Peak is kind of a walk-up, exactly. Uh, Craig Lake, all right, we're just getting you, Josh. Good to have you, buddy. Uh, 11 days, great. Mac, whoa. Seriously, Max Patch Mountain. So good job, Mike. You got your first actual soda thing. <laughs> well, that's awesome. Funny that uh, Kevin actually looked that up for me. Thanks, Kevin. Good to see you, buddy. Uh, I know you sent me some texts, but I haven't been able to respond. I hope, uh, hope everything's well. Uh, I hope uh, I know you had an interview this week, and I hope that went well, too. So, all right. Activation area and requirements. Uh, I'm going to bring some more information on that here soon. But the bottom line is, is not all peaks are directly, uh, I'm sorry, not all peaks, you don't have to activate right on top of the geological survey thing. You don't have to activate on that very tip of that rock sometimes. You look at some of my peaks that I've activated, and I don't even have room to set up. It was, it was kind of ridiculous. It was literally a boulder, and it was, it was horrible. I mean, I couldn't do anything. So what you can do, though, is, you know, if this is your peak right here, how do I do this? Let me see. You know what? Hydro flask. If this is your peak right here, and this is the actual summit, you can actually operate anywhere within 25 vertical meters of the summit. That could be way over here, technically, as long as vertically you are within 25 meters of the summit. So some of the ones that are on private property, the peak may be on private property, but it may be a gradual slope and there may be a fence line and you might be able to operate 200 yards away uh, laterally as long as you are 25, uh, 25 meters vertically from the summit, if that makes sense. Water, since I got it. So you have to know what the activation area is and you gotta know how to play by those rules, of course. So, um, let's see, what else we got? So those are the kind of the requirements to get into there. Yeah, go log your contacts, Mike. That's pretty awesome. Let's see. Honor system. It is all the honor system. Um, you could be audited. Uh, for example, if I put in uh, four call signs uh, saying I activated on this peak, in theory, if there was any reason to question it, uh, the SOTA management team or anybody on the SOTA thing could say, hey, you know, or maybe, maybe I logged you as my contact on a peak that I never, never talked to you on, and you find that. Uh, in theory, what could happen is, and you stumble on that, you could send an email to the soda management team and say, hey, uh, this guy's a fraud, man. I didn't, I, I didn't talk to him when he was on that peak. And then they could look at different information and maybe ask some of the other people that I've listed in my log, find out, and then they could either penalize me or bounce me out of the system. But it is on the honor system. And you know what? In the grand scheme of things, when you're doing something like this, you're only cheating yourself. I mean, you're going to pay for your own, your own actual physical trophy yourself. Uh, so if that's what you're into, shame on you, but it is on the honor system. So, hey, hey, what's going on, Eric? Good to see you in here, man. I talked about you earlier. I don't know if you saw it or not. Denali, 20,000 feet, way too much. Yeah, I know. And how many points? 10 points, plus three, I'm sure. I'm glad you found that, that site, though. All right, uh, own power and battery power. So this is another one of the rules you have to know. Now, remember I said, that, like, say, Pike's Peak. You could drive to the summit of Pike's Peak. And there was one that I did when I went out to Cuddyback for a field day. It was like literally a drive up out in the middle of the desert on the way there. But I stopped my truck shy of the summit. I walked the last 100 yards or whatever it was. I got up there and I set up the activation. So now I carried my gear myself to the summit itself. And I did not operate from any fossil fueled power source. So whether it be my vehicle or it be a generator or anything else, you can use solar. You can use batteries, of course. You cannot use AC, uh, you know, plug into a house. That doesn't make sense. Uh, put your mobile home on top, uh, whatever. But you, you cannot use anything other than batteries and solar in so many words. Um, if there's another way to make electricity, make your batteries, your, your ham radios work, great. But you have to carry your gear there yourself, and it cannot be umbilical corded to your truck 100 yards away. Let's, you can't run an extension cord, so you can run your 100 watts. you got to be on battery power. Again, honor system. But that is what it is. All right. Uh, let's see here. Mike needs a log. Ganali. Good to see uh, Eric in here. Uh, right here. Yeah. Um, so, Mike, if you don't know, that's the other thing I guess I should have mentioned. Uh, you will need to register uh, your call sign with the SOTA database for two things. One, if you, well, actually, I should say three things. 
uh, one, just to log your contacts and be part of the group system. And if you change your call sign, you can update it in there too, by the way. They do allow for that and all your points stay with you. Uh, two, if you're going to do APRS to SOTA or SMS to SOTA, you'll need to let them know so they can put your call sign into those databases so that you can use those features as well. So you do need to uh, do those logs with them. All right, so where are we at here? Coming on back. Own power, battery power. And then logging for verification. I kind of talked about the verification side of things. So that way they can look and make sure that you're doing the right thing and you know that you are too. All right, so what's next? Let's do this. All right, environmental considerations. Um, these uh, little pictures are on here for a reason. Uh, leave no trace backpacking. It goes without saying. Uh, I, think, I think, you know, I made a broad brush statement that ham radio operators are, are usually not, unlike Eric, Eric's in the group now, so you gotta be careful. Uh, he's like a triathlon guy now. I mean, he's, he's crushing it out there. Good job, Eric, I'm proud of you, man. Um, but generally speaking, uh, ham radio people are not the most active, as I said. This is a way to change that. Uh, this is also a way to bring the hiking community into ham radio and help our ranks grow. Um, but uh, one of the things I will speak on is I think ham radio people, generally speaking, are, are more polite, courteous, and good stewards uh, of land. I, I want to believe, I believe that. Uh, I think that um, generally you're not going to be leaving your trash. I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm stating the obvious on this one. See you later, uh, Tony. I know it's late there for you, dude. 73, brother. Uh, we'll talk to you tomorrow, uh, 8 o'clock your time, 12 alpha. I'll talk about that later on in, in the thread here. But uh, generally speaking, I don't think that we are a type of community, ham radio operators, that are going to leave a bunch of trash all over the place. In fact, uh, on the other side here, I think we're the type of people that actually pick up and, and leave it better than we found it. Um, so that's kind of the point of, of this is that the soda concept also embraces the leave no trace, uh, leave it better than you found it, and, and it'd be an example. But then there's also the other part of this too. Uh, so what other kind of pollution is there? I mean, we have light pollution, but we also have noise pollution. So keep in mind that if you're on a very popular summit, you don't want to have your antennas all over the place where people come up the trailer tripping on them because they're going to tear your stuff up. They could get hurt. You don't want that. It just it's bad. And you also don't want to have your radio. And I'm guilty of this, especially when I'm on a summit that I know there's nobody around for a long, well, I have a good idea. There could be around, I suppose. You can hear the wood, the sound carries a lot in the woods, but... Uh, audio levels. I'm kind of deaf. I don't like, I feel, I don't want to say I feel unsafe, but I'm not a big fan of having my ears blocked when I'm in the woods. I'm like Tony, I'm kind of, you know, we're just used to kind of being on the swivel a little bit. Um, what I generally like to do a lot of times is I'll just, you've seen in some of my videos, I'll have my, my uh, Pro Hile headset around my neck. I'm talking in the box. I like to use the box system, um, but I like to have, I have to have the audio up so that you guys can hear your contacts. That's why I've got it up. The flip side of that is if I can't hear somebody, I can put my headset on real quick and I can dig them out of the trash and that helps real good. But you know, if you've got a bunch of people on a summit, they don't, they may be interested, but maybe they won't. There's one summit that I got there first as early as awesome and I've all set up and right when I launched my drone, here comes like five people. And one of the guys made a comment about, oh God, I had to come on the day of the drones out here and wham, wham, wham on the drone. You know what? To some degree he was right. The other side of me is like, you know, I've got every right to fly my drone out here. And it wasn't like the special peak. It was, it was, it was the pinnacles when I did the pinnacles. Um, so it's kind of, we both have the right to be out there and do this, but we got to respect each other. And so I, once my drone was up and then he came up, I think it was, or they came up right around the same time, I did my quick thing, but then I couldn't land the drone because then they just kept coming. And I'm, I was on top of one of those rock peaks. I had nowhere to land. I think I, if I remember right, I landed it like within these boulders and I might have even grabbed onto it. I don't know, but. Oh, I think I landed on the other side where my daughter was. That's what I did. But, uh, you know, you got to just be careful of your audio levels and you got to be careful of, uh, you know, just being a good steward of the land uh, and leave no trace. So uh, a little bit on that. All right. Uh, hey, Tony, before you go, uh, let's see here. Let's see if I can do this. With this. All right. Uh, I'm going to go through these guidelines real quick. And then I want to show you guys something from last week real quick. Uh, this will be kind of a fun little video here. So activators must hold the appropriate license and operate legally from the license. So, you know, same rule applies. If you're up on the hill, uh, it's just like field day, no different. You have to do what's right with your license status, even if you're going into a different country. Um, I wish you were here, Tony. I'm going to show you the footage. Uh, maybe you'll hang out for just a couple more minutes. Uh, let's see here. You must be in or close proximity to a motor vehicle. I'm sorry, you cannot. So this is what I talked about already. 
Uh, but you may use a bicycle or an animal. So you can use horses, goats, bicycles. You can use that. Uh, you got to be within activation zone. I, I talked about that already. 25 uh, meters vertical distance. Uh, co closed contour line, of course. Uh, all equipment must be carried. I talked about that. Uh, it must be operated from portable power, battery, solar cells. Can't use fossil fuels. So some of the stuff I already covered. So we can go through it quick, which is good. And then, uh, okay, so one QSO is all you need to make the activation. But in order to get points as the activator, you have to make four QSOs. So I don't like doing four because here's what happened. One time I did four QSOs and I got home. No, I made five, I think. I made just enough. But I had one that was a bogus, uh, bogus call sign. So it was either that or I transposed it, one or the other. But that could happen. You get somebody out there and they throw out a bogus call sign or you mishear it. Um, good thing I record things and, and I'm able to recapture that stuff. But uh, So I don't always have the audio recording. So, sometimes I miss that too because I'm moving cameras around. But, uh, you know, if you made four contacts and one of them was a bogus call sign, guess what? You walk away with three. So I like to get a little bit of a cushion, you know, seven, eight or more if I can. I like a cushion of more than four for sure. Uh, and I already talked about this. Uh, you cannot use anything other than uh, simplex uh, or those kind of forms. No terrestrial repeaters. Nothing on Earth. No repeaters. All right. What else we got? All right. Rule for activators. So this is good for you guys. Because everybody likes rules. So I'm just going to leave this up here for a second while I take a drink of water. And then I'm going to play a video so that you guys can actually see uh, a little bit of activation in um, Florida last week. All right, that's hanging up there for enough. Bye. All right, so let's play this video clip for you. Change it up for a minute. All right, where are we at? Oh, what's going on, dude? <laughs> what's up, everybody? <laughs> We're not live. We're just going to record right now. Yeah. But uh, what the heck are we, Tony? Jesus. What is this place called? Rascal Flats or something like that? <laughs> I like it. Let me see. Uh, what was that place? Pasco called? County. But oh, Pasco County. Yeah, we're in Pasco. But, right near the ocean. But yeah, yeah the golf check this out. Say. So we're out here searching for uh, places to live, and then I bumped into this guy, Tony. And uh, so we're going to set up and play a little radio over here. See what we can do. Do this time. Uh, the TJ2B is not working too well. Roger, Roger. Come on, Mike. We hear you. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, this is Kilo 9 Alpha Romeo Victor. Mike, we copy you uh, 5959 here. 57 to 59. Roger, Roger. All right, Tony. All right. Are we alive? Is it recording? All right, it is recording. We're yeah, good to go. Oh, but you got it sideways. You got to put it up. No. Oh. It's going to come out all messed up. That's how mine works. Really? Yeah. Uh -huh. I don't know why. It'll work. All right. Anyways, it sucked. <laughs> <laughs> Propagation <laughs> sucked, that is, but we had a good time. We tried. We tried uh, to get you, uh, Gabe, and we tried to get you, uh, Mike. Mike, yep. Mike, yeah. And uh, I think Don tried for us. K yeah, we heard Mike real good, though. Yeah, Mike was, Mike was blooming in the best, but we thought we'd do a little better on this beach right here. Um, uh, what am I doing? I need to go like this. I can't turn it around. <laughs> Try to do a little on this beach right here. There's some drone shots I'll blend in. Uh, not too good on the on HF today. We only played for a few minutes. 40 meters, not so much. We might have a little issue with, what was that radio? The T2J? Uh, yeah, T2JB. I think I have to send it in to get fixed or something because I wasn't hearing much from that at all. Yeah, so you know, it wasn't a complete success, but uh, we had a good time. We got to link up and we got to play a little radio, fly the drone, and, uh, Look at them clouds and hang out. So. How beautiful. Yeah, look at that behind us. And we didn't get rained on. No. Rained on myself. <laughs> True. All right, on the next one. All right, so I had a little bit of fun with Tony. Uh, I always enjoy seeing that guy. Uh, good people, of course. So one of the things, um, you know, going back to the slide real quick here, is that, you know, we were on a public beach doing our thing, having a good time. But uh, back to the rules of soda is, is, you know, you need to make sure that whatever you do with soda is legal. Um, you know, your access... Uh, in and out private property. That's when I did Toro Peak. Ironically enough, Papa Systems up there and Kevin was able to do Toro Peak because he was able to, to get in there with them. But 
Um, you know, I knew that was one of those sticking points, so I went to the Indian Reservation and I found a way to uh, talk to somebody that knew somebody that knew somebody that could give me permission. And I actually had a permission slip with me when I went up there. Because, uh, you know, you just don't want to do the wrong thing. So I just took those extra steps and I even flashed that in that video just as an archive, just to have it. So a uh, question real quick here. looks like it says, uh, when you say your signal is 5958, five, what exactly does that mean and where are those numbers coming from? Uh, Matt, uh, those are called the uh, RST, uh, it's your signal strength, the reception signal strength report. Um, the readability is the first thing, you know, uh, one being like barely hear anybody, five being I can hear you perfectly good. And then when you do sideband or FM, that's why you hear just five nine. If it was uh, CW, it could be five nine nine or five seven nine, that kind of thing. But when you do a sideband or FM, five nine nine is like your S units, how many S units. So an S9 means uh, perfectly readable, nine S units, no problem. You don't even have to say 20 over, which would be 20 dB over or 40 over. You don't have to go into that. But 5.9, uh, if it was 5.5, uh, five, five, it would be perfectly readable, but an S5 on, on the meter. So it kind of tells you how strong you're coming in to uh, my station or vice versa. So when you work in QRP, and if I'm working somebody like, say, Tony in Florida, and I'm hitting them 5.9 from California to Florida, and we're both working 5 watts, that's huge. That tells you propagation's good, everything, every, the stars are lining up, everything's perfect in the world. Um, because you know that's that's awesome, uh, and if you get somebody that says they're two one two one two one, or they'll say they'll say rifle shot two 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 rifle shot, and they'll say long string means say it over and over and over again. You'll hear those different kind of things in the HF world. Uh, they're basically telling you, hey, I can barely hear you. Keep saying it because that's one way to confirm the QSO or the contact is to give a signal strength report. You know, a two two, a three three, a five nine, a five five, whatever it is, you give that to them. Uh, they tell you, and I'm not a big fan of this, contesting isn't my thing, but in, in contesting, uh, they'll do something else, and, and they even tell you, it's kind of crazy, they tell you uh, that, hey, uh, everybody in contesting is a 5.9. They even tell you in the extra class book, so just, just go with it, just, just say 5.9. They get mad at me, I'm like, oh yeah, you're about a 5.7, or 5.9, yeah, copy 5.9, it's like, no, you're a 5.7, and they get mad. So I'm not trying to upset them, but I'm just so accustomed to giving somebody what I believe is a, the best and honest signal report that I can give uh, that they, <laughs> the contesters don't like that. Why? Because for them, it's easy to always remember everything is 5.9. And I don't know, because it's all about speed, I guess, and, you know, trying to make it fast. But anyways, so that's your signal report. All right, so coming back to the, uh, the, the presentation here. Uh, let's see here. Where are we at here? Guidelines. Guidelines again. So claim points. Um, you must submit the log to SOTA database. I already talked about that. All modes, all bands are valid for the program, like I said. Um, chasers, uh, same rules. However, and I talked about this already, some of the stuff I've already covered, so I'm going to go through it pretty quick. I'll leave it up here uh, for your edification. Um, keep my eyes also on the, uh, the comments. Make sure I don't lose it out in the comments. Pack it in, pack it out all day long. I agree with you. Uh, Matt, good, good, good. Check it in. I'm reading these things super fast. So, got that. Appreciate the thumbs up. Yeah, thumbs up always help me. Interaction, engagement, love that. That's all good stuff. All right, keep it going. Okay, so refer to the Association Reference Manual or ARM for details. Every single uh, location has its own ARM. Like I look into the Whiskey 6 one, for example. Uh, there's a Whiskey 7 one. So, those are all out there. There's the general soda guidelines. And then each individual regional manager has their own association uh, reference manual uh, to look at for details on when their bonus points are, are you're eligible for their bonus points, if there's bonus points, some information about the summons, variety of different things. All right, FAQs, we're winding this thing down, we're cranking this thing out. Uh, so, can I use my VHF? You, uh, yes. Uh, it is not an HF only thing. What does happen though a lot is people get into soda. They start out as a tech, they play with the HTs, all, it's, it's a highly addictive thing. Um, you find out that, you know, it kind of, it goes, it fits with the kind of person you are, generally if you're a ham radio operator, um, and then all of a sudden you start thinking, I want more, and that's where the HF starts coming in, and then you upgrade your call, or, um, or in case some people do, they just need to upgrade equipment because they sat down and took all three tests at once, or whichever. Uh, but you get the privileges and you get the equipment and then you start working HF. And even if you have HF, doesn't mean that you don't work uh, VHF, UHF when you're on the summits either. It's still go back to that. So yes, you absolutely can. Uh, I would say that uh, it's probably th the first thing I would tell somebody to do is if you have an HT and you're a tech, go do soda. Go do it right away because if you don't play with the radio, if you're, if you're radio shy, 
then it's not going to happen for you and you may just forget about playing ham radio altogether. Some people just kind of, yeah, I got a license, then I didn't use it that much, I didn't talk to nobody. You start doing this and then you, you'll start overcoming that, that, that mic shy fear simply because you're out there and you're talking to people and you're having a good time and you're like, oh, this is kind of cool. And if you start learning how to spot, like I talked to with APRS or SMS, now you're learning how to use APRS, now you're using other technology, and then it all just kind of snowballs for you. And then, you know, a few slight modifications with your HT, you know, a roll-up J-pole, you can make one for pennies, a tape measure antenna, you can make one for super cheap, or you can buy a couple of antennas, whichever. Uh, and you can go to local mountains around wherever you're at and, and just have fun with a rubber duck. If that's all you've got, make it work. Uh, but it opens up a whole world for you. So the next question, uh, my last activation, I made some contacts via satellite. Are they, and, and the answer, you guys should be able to answer this, yes, because you've already done it. So... Uh, that's the only actual repeater that you can use as a satellite repeater. You're not allowed to use any other ones. Um, and you can see the reason why here. So what do we got here? Mike Wood from Toronto. We'll watch him getting later. Ran late on live stream. No problem, Mike. Thanks for jumping in there, buddy. Good to see you. Uh, let's see here. And then go on to the next question. Edit your logbook entry. Okay, so I've had to do this. Um, I've gone in. I've noticed I transposed a time, I think it was, or maybe it was a signal report or a call sign. I think it was a call sign. Might have messed up a call. There was something that I messed up. But when you put it into the SOTA database, um, you don't get to go back in and edit just one line within that entry or that activation. You actually have to delete the entire activation and start over. And this is why I like using that, that Hamlog app because then I could just CSV file it back and forth. And I just started, <laughs> I, just, I just learned that earlier this year or latter part of last year, I think it was, um, how to do that. And I was like, you know what, I got to figure this out. I was doing it the hard way. I was manually entering everything. What a pain in the butt. And that's when I started transposing things. Uh, but when you use that Hamlog app on your phone, it's just one, you're not bringing paper. It's just, it's, you know, I like trying to have things that have multiple purposes. So that right there is one way of doing it. But you have to go back in and you have to actually uh, delete the entire thing and then add the entire thing. Now, that's if you're an activator. If you're a chaser, it's a little easier because uh, you're only putting one entry in. Hey, I contacted this person on this date on this hill. If somehow you mess that up, you like you transpose their call sign, you delete one entry, you add one entry. So it's it's simpler. Um, but you still have to go in and do the whole entire thing. All right, next question. All right, as an activator, am I only able to contact or count contacts to soda chasers? No. The answer is uh, I could be driving my truck and know nothing about soda, listening to 5.2, the world is good. All of a sudden I hear CQ, 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 summits on the air. I come down, hey, call CQ, what's going on? And you're, yeah, I'm doing some that's on the air, blah, 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 blah. That counts. It, you don't have to have just a, that is a chaser. You just turn them into a chaser. And in many of my videos, I am telling people about soda and tell them they can get points and tell them they just chase me. That's a big reason why I'm doing this video because so many times I have to explain to them what soda is and what a chaser is and what this is all about. And I, I tell them, hey, check out my website and or check out my YouTube page. So uh, that's one way that I'm trying to break that break that down is by doing this video right here. So, next question. Next question, please. All right. New activator, wish to activate my local summit. Somebody else activated early in the year. Does this mean that I cannot activate it? No. You as an individual can activate a summit oops, uh, once in a calendar year. You can go back to it, but you don't get anything else out of it unless, well, maybe I should save that for the uh, the other question, but I'll say this unless there's bonus points involved and then we'll get to that in a second But basically just because somebody else activated it. That doesn't mean you can't go activate it uh, And a matter of fact, I go on a hill with Kevin. We both activate at the same time We both get to log the summit underneath our call signs as both activating and you'll see some of our videos with Kevin and I and we had some growing pains with this because we were learning <laughs> We're both running kx2s on 20 meters and we're blowing each other out and we finally learned how to tag team and We separate each other a little bit. So uh, that was learning stuff. We got to learn, but it, it, it's a lot of fun going up there with somebody. And then you bump in these things, you have to figure them out, or maybe somebody works on 40 and somebody works on 20. It's just like field day. You have those kind of issues. So, um, but yeah, you can, you can absolutely go up there and activate uh, all the time. I'll talk about the bonus points in a second. So a chaser, on the other hand, uh, if, if I'm sitting at home and somebody goes to Mount Baldy today and they, they activate Mount Baldy and I chase them today, uh, and then tomorrow, somebody else goes, I get the points for that. I get my, my 10 points from Mount Baldy or whatever it is. The next day, I'm sitting in my garage and somebody else goes up to Mount Baldy and they activate Mount Baldy. And I contact them and I chase them. 
I get another 10 points. I can activate that peak, I'm sorry, I can chase that peak every single day, once in a 24-hour period. I can, I can uh, chase the peak and get the points for it. So in theory, I could sit here and chase Mount Baldy every single day with a new activator every single day, and I would continue to get points all the way up to Shaq Sloth or beyond if I wanted to, in theory. Um, if that's what you want to do, uh, knock yourself out. So yes, you can, uh, as a chaser, you can work the summits every day. Um, it's only the activators that uh, have to worry about that. So hopefully the bonus question was next. All right, yes, this is the bonus one. So I'm going to go ahead and put this up so you can read it all. So if I go out and activate uh, San Gregorio today, and it's the summer, there's no bonus points for it. But December 1st, uh, the bonus point season go, c kicks in, and I go out and I activate Mount Baldi, I'm sorry, Mount San Gregorio on December 1st. Do I get the same points? Do I get the 10 points plus the 3, or do I get just the 3? The answer is I already got the 10 for the calendar year if I activated it today in the middle of summer. If I went out and did that same hike again, I would be doing it for the 3 points. So if it's a big hike like that and you're really after the bonus points, you should probably, when I, went, when I talked about summit selection, figure out how you want to put that into your rotation. And you should probably plan your summits out a few months out in advance so that you don't accidentally do something like that. Kind of like what I did with that one where I did the four plus three. Had I done it a week earlier, I would have got seven points instead of four. But you know what? Uh, it's also about the journey, not just the destination. So, uh, so be it. All right. What is activation zone? I talked about this. Um, this is that 25 vertical meters from the summit in a contour line. So it could go, you know, like this all the way around, whatever. As long as you're 25 vertical meters from the summit, you are in the activation zone. So uh, I'm going to leave that up there for a second because it's long. I want you to have a chance to read it. Well, that's up. I'm going to look at the comments. All right, let's see what we got here. Good to go. Stream health is still going. You guys still in there? You guys, am I putting you to sleep? I see 21 people in there. Where'd everybody go? Where'd my... All right. All right. We're going to keep on going here. We're almost done, guys. All right, so next question. The summit I wish to activate has a sign saying that it's on private property. Does mean I cannot activate it? The answer is no. You can always get permission. Uh, no is in, yes, you can activate it. Um, you can always get permission from the landowner, uh, like I did with the Indian Reservation on Toro Peak. Uh, I'm going to put this answer up there, I guess. Uh, again, if the peak is here and the, there's a fence line here and it's within that 25 meters to be on the public property, you can activate it from there. So there's ways to get around it. This is why you got to know the rules so you know how you can work that, uh, work that summit. So uh, there's lots of different ways to go back to it. Um, but just because it's on private property does, does not preclude you from operating uh, those things. The other thing, too, is, is one day it's on private property, maybe then it's not. Or vice versa. Maybe it was on public property and then all of a sudden became private property. So it could go back and forth. Uh, and that's up to the regional managers if they need to pull them off of the list or add them to the list. So a lot of reasons why they would still be a qualifying soda summit. All right. Final thoughts. All right. Here we are. We're, we're in the end of this, uh, this presentation here. Um, I will say this, that SOTA has been one of the funnest things that I've ever done in ham radio, like I said before. I've met a ton of cool people out here. Uh, I've got to play with different antennas and radios. Uh, I've sold more radio gear because I find that less is more. And really think about that, less is more. Um, you don't need that much stuff to do a lot of things. Uh, I've acquired a lot of junk in my life. I really have a little confession here. But um, you know, I'm selling things off as I'm, I'm thinning out the crop of stuff just so that I can kind of also look at my next stage of life and that's moving. Um, let's see, and now I'm starting to get comments. But, you know, I, I, I want to really get this information out there for, to, to really bolster our ranks as, as ham radio operators, to bring people in, um, to bring the hiking community, to bring young people in. I've got teenage daughters and a, and a 24 year old son. Uh, they're kind of interested. They're interested because of me, but there's also the geek factor. Let's just be honest. There is a geek factor to ham radio. There's a nerd factor to ham radio. I get it. Um, oh, well. And, and as a teenager, it's sometimes hard to embrace. Uh, and I think there's a lot of lessons that can be learned in that about being yourself and doing what you like to do and sharing things. And, and look at all the cool stuff that's been invented because of ham radio, remote controls, texting, email, all these different things that have come about because people like you and me have played in arenas like ham radio. Um, so it has been the greatest experimentation stuff that I've ever done. 
it's more than just goofing around, uh, playing ham radio, uh, you know, shack in the box style. Uh, it's a whole lot of fun for me. So let's see here. Um, back to the comments. What peaks in the USA are your dream peaks? Uh, well, I'll be honest with you. I have uh, a big inkling to want to go and visit Steve, in which I think I've got that set up here in the fall. Uh, I've sent Steve Galchuk, WG0 Alpha Tango, some messages and, and uh, kind of invited myself out to, out to Colorado. Uh, they got some big 14ers. He's always doing them. I've, I've watched a lot of his videos when I first started out. Uh, when he was making a lot of videos, him and his goats having fun out there goofing around in the hills. Uh, that's the kind of country that I'm really looking forward to doing. Uh, so I'm going to Oregon next. Just kind of go check that out because I want to save Colorado for Steve. Uh, anywhere where there's, there's uh, you know, mountains like that. Any of the Rockies are good. Of course, I want to go back to the Appalachians too. I want to go back there. I've never hiked really in the Appalachians. I want to go check that out. Upstate New York, Gabe. Uh, your hunting grounds. I want to go back there. I've never been there. Anywhere I've never been before, I want to go. Canada. I've got uh, Mike and uh, John up in Canada. I'm going to go up there and visit them. They're doing some moving and some things right now. Uh, but I'm going to go visit those guys, a couple other YouTubers, and some videos with those guys in there. I don't know. I haven't got to see if they're even in here yet right now. But they, uh, they've they invited me to come up there. So that's on the radar as soon as Mike gets back. So there's a lot of uh, a lot of places I want to go. Anywhere that anywhere that has some good peaks and some good people and and uh, and then I can fly reasonably close to and, and uh, link up with whoever's there and and you guys can host, and that's kind of one of the things I'll, I'll finish up with here soon. But hopefully that answers. I, I, uh, I really want to go to probably Colorado to start with, um, and then maybe into some into the Canada areas and then over upstate New York and Appalachians. Those are some different areas I really haven't explored much on foot I'd like to get to. Uh, that's a good question because uh, now you're making me think about it. <laughs> uh, Australia. I want to go to Australia. How about that? But here in the States, I think, is where I'm kind of limiting myself to. All right. Is CW that much of a superior mode for soda? I see 75% of all spots being CW. Josh, uh, that's a great question because, uh, you know, you and I have been playing around with CW a little bit. I'm doing the CW Academy with Tony coming up in September. And is it a superior mode? Uh, I would say, yeah, I think it's superior just like uh, any of the other digital modes, uh, you know, PSK31 and FT8, uh, simply because it's more efficient, less power, narrower bandwidth, punches through easier. Uh, there's, you know, it's just... You can get through with that much faster and easier than you can with uh, uh, single sideband. However, it's a skill that you need to learn if you're going to do CW. Uh, if you're going to use a decoder, don't count on it. Then you got to drag more gear up there. Uh, but you know the other thing too is uh, that really has a draw for me with CW is aside from what I just mentioned. Uh, one of the things I've had happen a lot, and I know some other guys have too, is you'll be out there, you do all this setup, and I don't, I don't contest, and you go out there, and it'll be the worldwide DX context on 20 meters, and you're like, Ugh. you cringe when you get out there because even field day can be challenging because it's just an absolute zoo. So when you're on the bands and all the contesting is happening on, it's crowded, and being the QRP guy, and people don't care about soda when they're doing contests, they don't care less. Um, so you, you've got competing interests going on. Now, I could always plan it for a different weekend, but if I did that, I, I would, you know, bump into times where I wouldn't go just simply because of contest. Now, forget that. So the, the, the beauty behind CW is it opens up 30 meters, and 30 meters is the one that I think uh, no contesting allowed, generally speaking, no contesting on. So you got C, CW only on 30 meters, and, and away you go. So that's another big draw. So I think there's a lot of reasons uh, for CW, uh, and I plan on getting around to it. All right. Still here, Mike? All right, good. Uh, I assume a lot of questions I would have had before have been answered by now, so I will check the video. All right, well, you can if you can ask whatever you want, Mike, and I'll tell you if it has been answered. Uh, and if it hasn't, then uh, then there you go. So ask whatever you want. That's okay. Uh, Kevin, let's see here. It's because CW is more efficient for making... Yeah, true. Gabe, good to see you're still there. Uh, Tony on the air. Demon. <laughs> you're still plugging that thing away, huh? Good. Uh, let's see. Where do I find... Where do I find info on activated peaks? Too disabled to climb peaks, but can chase like a hound dog. All right, so uh, to find info on activated peaks. Don, when you're talking about that, let's see here. Uh, I want to make sure I understand your question. When you say, where do I find info on activated peaks? Are you talking about peaks that are live being activated right now that you can go to? If that's the case, go to that soda.uk.org page I put on the very front of this. In fact, you know what? I can do this right here. I'm going to go to the front so I can refresh my memory. Yeah, soda.org, O-R-G, .uk. On there, you'll find a, a tab that says Soda Watch. 
Uh, you go on there and that right there is all the spots that are coming in. That, that is where people are putting in their alerts uh, saying, hey, tomorrow I'm going at this time on this peak, uh, these bands, these modes. And then the actual spots means they're happening now and you could chase them. So that's one way to chase actual live activations going on right now, 24-7, because this is a worldwide thing. There's guys in England and uh, Germany and everywhere else that are doing it right now as we speak. I've spoken to people in New Zealand and Austria and China and not China, but uh, Japan. So it's all over the world. So time zones, of course, everything is UTC time. Um, but that's one way to find those. Another thing is if you're looking for just uh, uh, peaks to activate and you want information on them, that's how this page started, honestly, was it doing tr my, my page, I'm saying my YouTube channel, was doing trail logs, trail video logs. So uh, you can find information about the different uh, trails or peaks and activations from guys like me or people do blogs or sometimes they take pictures, sometimes just do a few little bit of text things. Hey, I parked over here. Uh, you need a forest adventure pass or look out for this, or whatever it is, by looking at each one of those individual peaks on the Soda Maps page from that same website, it'll open up, find your zone that you're interested in, find the peak, click on the number, that little triangle with the number on it, it'll open up a little box, and then in that box, uh, you'll click on uh, the title, and you'll see where it says in there, number times activated, and you click on like more info, and down there, not everybody does it, but you'll find information that people put in there. A lot of times when I do activations on peaks, uh, look at some of the ones that I've done. You'll see that I drop my YouTube URLs in there saying, hey, here's a video of, of this activation. I also put them on a lot of different Facebook pages I frequent too. So hopefully that helps you about that. Uh, and if I answer that question, let me know if that doesn't make sense or if I'm on the wrong track with your question there, uh, Don Selby, let me know. All right, Eric. I know it's Eric because uh, this is C.O. Eric. Yeah, CW8, honestly, superior for QRP. And the minority of my Shack Sloth points are CW. Really, the minority. So Eric uh, is one of my motivations. Uh, K0EAP, he's out there right now. Um, he went to the CW Academy, and a couple other guys did. And because of Eric, uh, and he's crushing it out there uh, doing CW. He's like almost exclusive CW anymore. Uh, I don't know if I'll go that far, but, I mean, it's really he's really bit that bug hard. Um, he's, and he's doing so well at it that, I, that I'm really convinced about the CW Academy. So if you're interested in CW and you, you've never learned it or want to refresh your memory like me, being a slow code general from 20 years ago, I have to relearn the whole thing, it seems. Um, check out CW Academy for more information. And if I remember, I'll put some comments on the bottom about, uh, about that. All right, let's see here. Uh, I'm glad I subbed on the soda. Stubbed on the soda. I can't wait to get started. First peak might be in a few weeks. Uh, Matt, charge, man. I know you and I have been talking a lot on email. Uh, hit me up on Twitter as well. Obviously, YouTube videos. Uh, if you got questions about some recommendations you want from me on which peaks to go to, fire away. Uh, you can obviously look through my whole YouTube feed. And you'll find all kinds of different information on channels there. All right. Did Gabe leave? Still here programming. I got Toda. Toda, talk to you later maybe. Um, all right. Figure out the apps and how they work. No problem. Uh, let's see here. Going on down the line. Majority of Shacks. Yep, Eric. Try Dolly Sods in West Virginia. Highest point in the state in the Apple. I'm down. Let's do it. All right. I care, Jerry. I care. <laughs> Good point of 30 meters. Thanks, Josh. Uh, Don, I guess I answered your question, Don. K-E-8-J-M-S. All right, cool. Uh, I guess that helped you. Dennis, thanks to Eric, I now use Hamalert for iOS. Let me get notified when soda activations are happening as well as reserve beacon. Okay, so Hamalert, is that an app? If that is, let me know. I'm in that. Oh, Kevin, you got into that September Academy with Tony Knight. Sweet. That's going to be awesome. Uh, all right, Matt, no problem. Glad to help. And let's see here. Canada, it's relatively flat, really. Wow, but it doesn't seem like a lot of peaks we have are officially sort of recognized. How do they get accepted as peaks? All right, Mike, that's a good question. Uh, I did not talk about that um, too much. So if there's peaks in your area, they need to meet the minimum threshold. There is information on the SOTA site on the criteria. So what you need to do is look on to the general information and then the ARM or the Association Reference Manual for your area. And when you find that, you'll find different information about different peaks and why. You'll also, in that process, find who your uh, association manager is. And if you believe a peak needs to be either, either placed onto uh, the reference point system as, as a qualifying peak, 
or removed for one reason or another, like say a major housing development came in and they bulldozed that mountain. This is California, that happens. Uh, for whatever reason, that's where you feed that information to so they can keep this database relevant. Um, there is some criteria, and I think it's on a 100, 150 meters minimum elevation threshold, I think is what it is. There's something about 150 meters. Uh, that information is, is on there. Again, I didn't want to give everything away, so I definitely wanted you to uh, look that stuff up. But that information is on there, Mike, and, and I hope that helps you. And you're on the Toronto side. Remind me, you said Ontario. I thought you said Toronto. Is that the same place? That's over by New York side, right? That's, that's the East Coast side, Mike. Am I correct? Uh, if so, uh, I haven't gone over there, but I would love to. But I've, I've talked to people in Canada. Uh, quite a bit, so hopefully that is one way to do it. So, what is the best way to raise money for a YouTube person's venture, uh, Dean? Uh, I don't know. Uh, I have uh, on my web page because people like you have asked that question to me before. Uh, I felt funny doing it, but I did it anyway because there's people that want to help. So I set up what's called the HQD tip jar. Uh, it is on my web page. If you click that, it goes right to my PayPal. If you wanted to make a donation there to help do something, that's one way to do it. Uh, that would go directly here. Uh, the other way is through Super Chats right here, right now. That's another way to do it. Uh, buying off of my affiliate link in my HQD uh, gear page on my website is another way that I get you know some pennies on the dollar for those different transactions. Uh, there's a variety of ways that can help me. Um, if that's what you're wanting to do, I think, I think that answers your question to raise money. Um, if you wanted to raise money for somebody else, uh, I don't know what their vehicles are for accepting uh, such gifts like that, um, but there's a couple ways that I've set up uh, If you wanted to do something like say specifically for me you say raise money and If you want to like I don't know go to your club and pass a hat if that's what you're talking about I don't know what you mean by how actually the raising of or the the process of getting the money to the individual um, But there's a there's a variety of ways, but there's a couple ways that I set up to uh, to kind of help with that so uh, if anybody wants to do that I, I appreciate that and uh, There you go. All right, so ham alert uh, let's see here. Cool. Thanks. Yeah. Across from Buffalo. Okay. Well, uh, well, Mike, I'll say this. I don't know. You're pretty close to Gabe and one UFO and, uh, that's that New York area. And hopefully I can get over there and do some activations. So, uh, I'm going to move over to the final slide of the final slides and let me go right down to, uh, let's see here. This one right here. All right. So as I wind this thing out, a couple things, super chats. Uh, those who do super chats, thank you so much. Um, everything helps. Uh, gas is expensive. It's even going up more. Uh, not that I'm desperate, but it does help. It does help motivate me, and uh, it, it shows that you know you find some kind of value in what I'm doing here on the channel. And uh, and obviously, I try to be responsive. Any even all of your comments, I respond to, whether it be on Twitter or emails. Uh, sometimes it takes me a day or two to get to them. Uh, ask Matt, uh, but I always respond. And and. Any and all comments get a response from me. That's just one of my personal goals. Um, I am most active on Twitter. If you really want to get in touch with me fast, uh, Twitter is where it's at. Uh, my handle is at KG6HQD on all of my social media platforms, my Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. I do keep Facebook primarily for very close friends and, and my family. I did decide to keep, I kind of, I opened the door a little bit and then it just started taking off. And then I was getting friend requests from weird girls I didn't know. And I just like, you know what, I got to put a stop to this. Uh, so, but on the other platforms, on Instagram and, and uh, Twitter specifically, I'm really the most active on Twitter and then of course YouTube. But if you want, if you got a question like right now, uh, Twitter, 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 Twitter. Uh, whether you DM me or you hit me on my page, respond, uh, that's a great way to get a hold of me. The other thing next to Twitter I would say is uh, during my commute throughout the week, uh, because again of Dennis, I'm going to throw props out there to Dennis again for hooking me up with that hotspot and being on the Papa system, having access to all the different D-Star stuff now. If you are on D-Star, I will always have one side of my radio on the Reflector 12 Alpha, REF-12A, REF-12A, like it shows right here. Not the X Reflector, that's an analog one, but the REF-12A. Uh, I've got that thing figured out right now, and as I'm learning how to move some things around on this, I will be able to bounce to other reflectors, and I can still through a different means, but I'm trying to stay on 12 Alpha uh, for my commute. Uh, about uh, roughly commute hours for me are approximately 5 a.m. to 5.30 a.m. Uh, ish uh, Pacific Coast time in the morning and then in the evening uh, I'm 15.30 to <laughs> anywhere from uh, 16.30 to 1700 Pacific Standard Time. 
Tuesday through Friday right now. Any other time that I'm on the truck driving around though, I'll throw my call sign out there. Uh, Gabe's good at finding me on the D-Star gateway thing. He tracks me on that. Uh, but 12 Alpha, I'm plugging 12 Alpha, 12 Alpha, 12 Alpha, because if you're on D-Star, um, I'm really kind of, I, I spend a lot of time on the freeway, unfortunately, in Southern California. Uh, so looking for a soda, soda host. And what I mean by that is kind of what we talked about a little bit ago. Hey, if, if uh, you're open to having me, I'm open to coming. If the schedules will line up, if everything is good in the world and I can get there and it works for you, uh, I would love to come out and do some summits uh, out in your area with you, do a YouTube collaboration or have you as a guest person as your host to me and, uh, and, uh, and do all that. That'd be, that'd be great. I'd love to come out and visit uh, anywhere, uh, Canada, all over the U.S., you name it. I probably won't go to Mexico. Um, it's just not where I'm going right now. Um, but anywhere else, I'm open to going. If it's possible, uh, hit me up for that. I'd, I'd be really interested in that. Another thing too is uh, I look at my analytics on the channel. Um, there's a lot of what's called uh, subscribed and not subscribed, and I want to change that. I'm, I've got more subscribed than not subscribed, but there's still a, a good amount of people that find this video uh, in different areas. I would ask that you consider subscribing and uh, engaging, not just subscribing, but engaging like what a lot of guys are doing here. And the other thing, of course, is uh, shopping on my, my website there on uh, the hqd.us, kg6hq.us, and then go to the HQD gear page and uh, scroll down there and look at some of those items that would help me out tremendously. One last look at the comments. Let's see what we got here. All right. Okay, check it out. Yes, he does. Got to jump off. All right. All right, everybody. I'm going to wrap it up right there. I want to say thanks to everybody who uh, came out here. I appreciate uh, everybody. I would ask you if you can give this video a thumbs up. Uh, subscribe, uh, find me on the radio, Look, uh, come back to my website, look for the calendar. I'll be putting that up here in the next few days if I figure out the plug-in issue. Um, uh, let me know. I'm going to do a poll on Twitter here soon about uh, the, the optimal day and date, or said date of the week and time that would work for most people uh, for these live streams. Tell me if uh, live streams are what you'd like to see more of, if you want static videos, you want the hiking videos, a little bit of everything. Uh, let me know. Uh, I'm here to engage with you guys and have fun. So thanks again, 73. I look forward to hearing you guys on the air. Uh, and I hope you guys get involved in soda. I hope I answered most of your questions. And there'll probably be some subsequent videos on some of these topics just a little bit deeper uh, in subsequent live streams. So have a good night, everybody. 73. And uh, thanks for sticking around.